Okay, what's up guys? So I got some questions about the actual Alesis software as in uh, the software for your VI series keyboard, uh, you know where to get it and how to use it. So I'm going to take you guys through that whole process. So right here I'm on the Alesis website. We got this awesome girl playing drums on the first page. Okay, so to get to the software you have to first go to keyboards midi controllers i couldn't read for a second i'm fried from work whoa i didn't even know they had a vx series so i'm just gonna put that in a new tab <laughs> and leave that there but yeah okay so i have a vi 49 whatever your keyboard is you would find that here so vi 49 okay and once you're on that actual page for your keyboard you go to downloads okay so then there are your drivers and your editor okay and also the firmware update I have the latest uh, firmware but if you need it you could download that this is where you get everything for your keyboard from so let's go ahead and download the BI editor for Windows And we're just going to go through the install really quickly. Okay, so at that point, once you've installed all that stuff, you should be able to just open up your BI editor. It's here in my recently added section. Okay, so now I'm here, right? So what you can do at that point is change a bunch of different things so it's split up into these main sections which is the main where you can get presets pretty much for how you've mapped everything so you can get presets from the hardware or you can send a preset to the hardware a save preset to the hard drive or load a preset from your hard drive okay pretty self-explanatory then when you click on any area it automatically takes you to that pad okay so notice as I click around it's changing between these tabs right and once you're in one of these tabs you're able to edit uh, the mode so either cc after touch and it's different for you know different uh types of switches because for example like these switches wouldn't really have after touch they wouldn't really need it because that's not how they function um yeah so you can change certain things like midi channels so on and so forth really what is like kind of most important that you can change is the cc like note and in some applications like if you're running several midi devices changing the midi channel could be helpful uh, in some situations it really depends on what your setup is like so you can go through the knobs and you can map the midi cc to something else and you can change your aftertouch settings as well. So you pick CC aftertouch and then you can actually change the MIDI CC notes. So you could actually go through for all of these and edit the notes. But what I prefer to do most of the time is if I'm in my actual software, I'll just go ahead and uh, do MIDI learn because I pretty much every DAW and most software supports the MIDI learn thing where you can just right click hit MIDI learn and then hit the key or knob or whatever on your keyboard and map things that way and then you just save those I find that works a lot better than like figuring out what you know MIDI CC you know that you need to get and looking it up in some manual and like and changing all of this by hand but in some situations like if either your software doesn't support it or if you're using this for hardware synths it is helpful to actually use the editor this way 
So the next thing, the drum notes are, are the same. You know, you can change it from note to, you know, all these different options. Then you can change the notes, so on and so forth. You can change the curve on the drum pads to different response curves. So they pretty much like how the pad responds after you hit it. So whether and the sensitivity. Yeah, so how the pad responds when you hit it and the sensitivity you can change with this curve. You have to consult the manual to see what each one of these means. Um, then there's the roll mode, which you can change. Uh, you can also change a lot of this on the actual keyboard. I made a video on that, but you can change it to toggle or momentary. Like I might prefer to switch this to momentary, for example. Uh, the time division I always like to do on the actual keyboard. You know, if you want to add swing or get, you know, things like that, you can edit that here. Um, yeah, so the transport, that stuff is here. So pretty much everything. The key bed, you can, like, actually split the keyboard. And that's useful, especially if you're running out to a hardware synth. Uh, because some of them allow you to have two different sounds on different parts of the keyboard and that could be helpful in software as well uh, so that's a you know a good one to look at and you know so it tells you where you split so on and so forth uh, yeah and the rest of this stuff is pretty much the same so the thing about this is Although the UI is okay, that's one of the things I said in my actual like impressions slash review of this. Like to use this software, you kind of like have to know what things are. Meaning you gotta look at your manuals for stuff to know like what in MIDI notes. I mean, sometimes in some software, you know, it'll tell you, but you kind of have to like know so you might have to consult manuals and documents and things like that. And I'm just really not into that, especially since for the most part, I just <laughs> I just use this to play piano stuff. And like since they're like I don't even use a lot of these <laughs> features, to be honest, but I know about them. That's why I'm making this video for you guys. So I wish it was like a more intuitive. I don't know, like more integrated into certain software kind of system but while i was on the site downloading the software for this vi 49 keyboard uh one of the things i came across was this vx 49 series and it actually fixes a lot of the issues that i was talking about where i feel like the vi series isn't as well integrated well now the vx series is so <laughs> Yeah, it looks like, as far as I can tell, a better integrated way to like browse through your sounds and plugins, and probably they probably have better. Yep. 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 Okay. Yeah. So it, it fixes a lot of things that I was talking about with integration with plugins and so on and so forth. So it looks like if you want you know, those more advanced features might want to go with a VX keyboard. I have an Ableton push and I use Ableton, so it's not really necessary for me, but maybe I'll check one out. All right. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Uh, let me know what you thought. If you have any questions in the comment section below and have a great day.